All right, guys, the Lewis structure of IF5. First, how many electrons are there going to be here? Each iodine brings seven. Each fluorine also brings seven. I know this because they're both in the seventh column of the periodic table. When I add those up, I end up with 42 electrons. So I'm going to have to put 42 electrons in my diagram. First things first, draw your central atom and the other atoms around it. The least electronegative atom here is I, and I need five fluorines around it. One, two, three, four, five. Now I didn't space these equally because I kind of know what it's going to look like. No harm, no foul if you drew them symmetrically around the I. Next, put electrons in your bonds. Two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Now fill your outer shells until they have a full octet. I need 42 electrons, so count with me. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. We still have two extra electrons to put in here, even though we already have our outer atoms filled. So we have to dump them on the center atom. That's 42 electrons, and we're done. Everything has a full octet here, all the Fs. Iodine has what's called an expanded octet, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons around it. This is where I'm going to tell you the secret no one actually tells you. The octet rule where an atom is limited to eight electrons really only works for C, N, O, and F. Anything beyond that can technically have an expanded octet. Sulfur can have 12. I've seen chlorine with 10 or 12. Phosphorus with 10. Bromine can have 12. Whatever. That rule that it, you can only put eight in each atom really only works for these four. That's the Lewis structure of IF5. Great job, guys. Cheers.